Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about a topic that often trips people up on IT certification exams, output encoding. Output encoding is an important technique used to protect applications against potentially malicious input, such as that used in SQL injection and cross-site scripting attacks. The basic premise of output encoding is to take a potentially dangerous character and replace it with an equivalent string that produces the same result for the end user but doesn't have the risk of maliciously manipulating the application. We often use two different types of output encoding. HTML encoding uses an ampersand notation and it's used for encoding values in an HTML document, like a web page. URL encoding uses a percent sign notation and is used for encoding values in a web address, or URL. There are some very common values that we want to output encode. The less than symbol used in HTML tag-based attacks, such as cross-site scripting, is HTML encoded as ampersand LT semicolon and URL encoded as percent 3C, while the greater than symbol is HTML encoded as ampersand GT semicolon and URL encoded as percent 3E. The single quotation mark used in SQL injection and related attacks is HTML encoded as ampersand hash 827 semicolon and URL encoded as percent %27. And the double quotation mark is HTML encoded as ampersand QUOT semicolon, and URL encoded as percent %22. The forward slash used in URLs is HTML encoded as ampersand hash X2F semicolon, and URL encoded as percent %2F. And we also need to encode the ampersand itself because it otherwise indicates HTML encoding. We HTML encode the ampersand as ampersand AMP semicolon and URL encode it as percent %26. Similarly, we encode the percent sign, which is HTML encoded as ampersand hash x25 semicolon and URL encoded as percent %25. Now that's just a short list of some of the commonly encoded values. You shouldn't attempt to perform encoding manually because there are many other values that need to be protected as well. Instead, you should use a secure, trusted encoding library that automatically validates and encodes all potentially dangerous values. Next, I'm going to show you a demo, but before I do that, I want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next test and pass that exam on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new videos as they come out. You've almost certainly already seen output encoding at work. Let's take a look using the Bing search engine. I'm going to attempt to execute a SQL injection attack against the search engine. Now I know this isn't going to be successful, but I'm doing it to take a look at how output encoding works. In my query to the Bing search engine, I'm going to put a single quote to try to break out of a SQL query. Then I'm going to put my own query, select star from passwords. Then I will put a semicolon to end that query and two dashes to begin a comment to get rid of any extraneous code that might be at the end of that query. When I execute this search, I can see in the URL bar that Bing has done some output encoding. Specifically, the single quote character that I need to break out of the SQL query has been re-encoded as %27. Encoding is an important way to protect web applications. Now remember, you shouldn't try to perform all of this encoding manually. Instead, use a trusted library to assist you in your work. Encoding is an important way to protect web applications. Remember, you shouldn't try to perform all of this encoding manually. Instead, use a trusted library to assist you in your work. I hope this video helped you better understand output encoding. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.